Okay, I'm going to give us, we got 20 minute countdown on the clock. <clears throat> Wait a minute, count down until you start recording. It's it's live now. Huh? It'll get cropped. But sometimes we have good conversation before we start, especially five minutes before. And also, it gives people that are joining in online a chance to see that uh, it is, they can join in live before it's uh, too late. What are the conversations pretty? Mm-hmm. What? We get that too. <laughs> I think that says more about us. <laughs> where, are people, where are people joining in online? Let's see. Well, we've got we've got a few options. So there's Twitch, <clears throat> there's YouTube, and there is Jitsi. Well. course I don't know how. can you will you open up Jitsi and uh, okay. well, well you don't don't you don't have to worry about it do your thing but I'm no, just gonna, okay. I just finished that sorry sir okay. I mean, um, I'm gonna go get some yeah so the third is coming hey don't open on the wrong screen discord this guy just so he started taking over channels. Oh, lots of like updates. Serving people. That's right. <clears throat> Take over people's channels. And like, make them not mad at on the room stays around the channels they started. They're just taking over everything. Are we talking about Clubhouse? No, Free and Open. Oh, okay. Uh, same thing. So, Free and Open and Clubhouse. Are the well, same, same scenario, scenario. Same, uh, same yeah. story. Mm-hmm. Different yeah, different platforms. And they said we don't know what the intentions are. <clears throat> it's an over three and a half. All right, I'm gonna go get some pizza. I think we're I think we're live on all the platforms here. Let me just double check. Cool. YouTube dot So I have a question. What happened with all the the uh, the admins of Node or the admins of Rust just up and quit. There was like some hurt feelings or whatever. Or... Oh, oh God! Wait, really bad feelings. burnout or something? Oh, like they had ridiculous feelings. deadlines or something? They they were, they were just saying like that they were like people were complaining because they had like answer to it was like was it uh, so was it All right. Let me know if, when you join in. I'll turn off my mic. Okay. And you can broadcast. It's hard to get to. Just turn off the TV. How do we turn that back on? Uh, I don't know. Right. I turn on that camera. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's it's good. Good. I just push the button on the TV. Right. We we've learned this after many times. We're like we're no longer trying to use whatever system. We're just plugging what are you right talking in. About, huh? I have no idea, but <clears throat> it's a bit slow. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Nice guy. They can say they look at the proportions. Like, in my head, it's <laughs> proportions of rest of my body. Like, that's just another kid. <laughs> <laughs> He's just amazing. He's awesome. Like, okay. Look, his arms don't reach above his head. <laughs> Where'd you go up? San Diego. Okay. Yes, uh, uh, lived there for about 
Why? This is a little. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why? What are you talking about? What? <laughs> oh, man. So. Don't break some bands. Lawyer. Yeah. Taylor's still wearing that now. It's a little more San Diego y. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, I knew, I knew about. I can shift over a little bit. I don't know. So it's just getting acclimated to it. If I live next to her, super nice. It's better if you have other kids. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Spend time with not. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we actually, so we lived in a place where. We won't, we didn't have it because I'm throwing AC. Yeah, just, oh. so in, in San Diego? No, no, it's free. It's right now on. Ooh, yeah, they ripped off an AC or something. It's so free. I don't know how we did it. Where were you in San Diego? Diego? Uh, so I grew up in Street Valley. Okay. I know, I stayed in the Encinitas. That's all. Yeah, it's over by Oceanside. Ocean but side. they have Moonlight Beach Side. It's super chill. It's not like a super big, like, um, if you go there, it's super big. Is that funny? Yeah, it's super good. What did that say? I kind of beat it. It was quite fun. It was smooth. They're 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 Mine is still off in Jitsi, but I figure if we let people get settled in another minute or two here. Can you fix Sierra that I'm here? On my phone. Well, I have my phone, but it's, um, I just have my phone right now. It's, 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 Mama! <laughs> and then we're, we're doing something like that. Yeah, Tuesday is fine. No, I think we're, I think we're, we you go, know, oh, <laughs> Did you know me? So funny because your brother came to get on me. Yeah. I wanted to do driving and I can only do that least. Everyone, this is my cousin down. Hello there. First time.
I'm going to corral everybody in and we do our time on our tradition of introduction. Bring out Chim's productions. Come here to talk. Bring out Chim's productions. All right. Well, welcome everybody. I'm going to welcome you a few times tonight. Is your mic so off in Gypsy? My mic is off in Jitsi. I didn't turn mine on. Okay, you turn yours on if you want. Whoa! You changed to light mode. I did. Oh, how exciting. Uh, so, <clears throat> welcome to the Rust Meetup. I'm going to do that again when we actually get started so it makes it into the cut of the thing as well. But, uh, I'm AJ. I'm the one that runs this thing. Uh, this is, this is Jared. Jared. Jared, sorry. Jared, Jared is our gracious host tonight here at Vivid. Uh, we will just go around and do introductions because I think we do. There's always new people. So we'll start over here with you, the presenter tonight. You don't actually have to say too much because you can introduce yourself when you present as well. Okay. Le leave some enigma. All right. Leave some mystery. I'm the guy presenting. <laughs> Boom. Done. Uh, Where's Jordan? Yeah. Uh, my name's Michael. Uh, this is the first time I've been here. Just a hobby hobbyist rest for me all. Welcome, Welcome on out, Michael. You are. Exactly. Uh, I'm Levi. I've been uh, on and off attender of the meetup. Pretty much as long as it's been going. Uh, I have a day job in Rust, which I enjoy. I work for Red Canary. Uh, awesome. You were where? Red Canary. Oh. Uh, I'm Lane. I'm a Rust imposter. I've been trying to come to this for like six months plus. You're Lane. I'm Lane. You're <laughs> late. Yes, I'm AJ. Yeah, next to actually meet you. Yeah, we don't look anything like our Twitter bios. We've had Twitter correspondence. Yeah. Um, so I mostly do go stuff a lot, um, but I like Russ. So Lane. Lane. Yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, we're going back. We're doing introductions. Sweet. Matt. You can look at the people. You don't have to look at the camera. I'm just doing it for the two people that are watching online. Matt. Who's online? I don't know. How are we doing introductions? I missed that. Just a little bit about um, I'm a, I'm a uh, SRE at uh, X1 Credit Card. I don't do any rest, but I do a lot of rest on my free time. I'm with men. No. Oh, uh, Mike Harding, um, on the Discord and most other places, I'm under the handle Redoxion. Um, and then I'm doing a little bit of Rust for contract work, freelance kind of stuff right now. Cool. Um, but as for my day job, I'm just going to try and turn it into Rust slowly. Slowly oxidizing. And if there's one man that I can proudly call more of an equal opportunity offender than even myself, Todd, uh, I run a software consultancy that does modern development culture. Uh, I would call it like help, but it's more trolling. Uh, we change works. Usually they end up much better. So keep doing that. Rust is in my tool belt, but I haven't done anything significant with it. It's changing my environment. But yeah, I just love the. The ecosystem and the opportunities it kind of opens. So I've been coming to you and been, will continue. Right. Uh, Lean back a little there, Todd. Yeah. I am Garrett Thornburg. I work at MX. Uh, we have one Rust service, but most people don't realize it's running in production, but it totally is. <laughs> and uh, I showed it last one as part of the. Like, like, uh, yeah. I like Russ. It's fun. Vance? 
And Spencer, I, I just like the rest crap. I don't really know anything about this. We're just and cool then, people. Yeah, we yeah. did. And uh, yeah, I brought my family. Wheat. I mm-hmm. guess I was supposed to. I'll bring them along next time. Last time I had my his brother. It's my cousin. Or my wife's cousin. <clears throat> Alan. And my daughter. Becca, so. Yeah, I think that you're the only one that got the email about bringing your family to meet. Your family? <laughs> yeah, I totally, so, totally could have done that. Yeah, so I'll I'll try to send it out a little bit more in advance next time. I think it's cool to have me. And there's someone I can't see. Well, you're gonna have to lean back a little. I'm down. With, yeah, it's his cousin. Oh, uh, I was invited by someone who doesn't know a lot about Russ. So imagine how much I know about Russ. Uh, I basically worked in JavaScript and TypeScript. I did try Rust. I, I I was intrigued by it a couple years ago because it got the it keeps getting like most love and it seems to have a big fan. I, I tried learning it. First impression was relatively difficult, but um, we're high learning curve, so I'm optimistic about it and here to learn more about it. That's okay. Tough one, Josh. Right shoulder. Well. My name's Will. Um, I'm an alcoholic. Actually, not worse. Hi, Will. I'm a PhD developer. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, I do PHP Node, and I've been coding C++ for a long time as a hobby, but I've heard about this Rust thing, and I have no idea what this is all about, but a lot of concepts down the sand. Well, you've been here like six times. I know. How can you have no idea what it's all about? He's a PHP developer. It takes time. Oh, okay. <laughs> usually writing <laughs> PHP. So. Which is the associate of array? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matt. I hosted last time. Jared. Thank you, Matt. I don't work in us, but I'd love to. We need to make it happen. This Thank you for thank you for the venue and the pizza. Forward that on to Jeff. Where is Jeff anyway? Yeah. I had a birthday. How dare every, she? Every, every, every year. On Rust. It's bringing your family bringing? to the meetup. We could have had cake. She said she was not in. Should have had your five year old's birthday. Has she seen how cute Ferris is? Totally gonna get to see if I can get one of my kids to do the birthday thing. We could have got her a sticker. Stickers? Yeah, everybody loves stickers. I don't know. My kids love all the stickers. Cake, pizza, two products, party. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right, and then we got we got Jared. Hi, I'm Jared. I am very new to Rust. I've done a couple of tutorials, not very much. And then I forgot everything I need because it's been a couple months. That's where I'm at. Is that me? Who is that? Sorry. I've got that one, but that one's for. Silence our phones if we haven't already. Yeah, everybody, silence your phone. Be adults. Come on. Oh. I've never had 745. Maybe you're trying to get up in the morning, but you didn't. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly what happened. Okay, so, and then. Me every time. Uh, I'm AJ. As we already discussed, I I do I do the meetup, uh, and I don't do hardly any rest, but I love watching the presentations and reading the books. Go big! <laughs> you want me to introduce myself too? What? Oh, did you not introduce yeah, yourself? Yeah, you skipped him. Did we skip you? He was out. Rude. I was like getting hot chocolate. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've got thirty three oh, seconds, and then we've got a. Oh, the start. pressure! Oh, I do Rust. I teach Rust. I got some courses. You can have free access to it if you want. Three hour little crash course. Yep. It's, it's good. He can still feel good. I recommend it. Okay. I pay him every time to say so. You have like the best Rust course because it's, it's not the YouTube. It's not by the one that is like, just you think about like which one is the best and it is, I think it's the best. Sweet. Thanks. My courses are short. Very concise. Yeah. Good info. That's kind of so, 
<laughs> See? And there you go. There you go. Do you have an education? Or do I have an education? <laughs> well, I teach the Rust course. About it. My, my dad was a professor. My aunt's dad was a professor. Grandma taught. Oh, there we go. Turn that on. I had a grandpa taught fifth grade. I, I was the black sheep. I went up to the Oh! So you have the professor genes, but you fucked. Yeah, that's right, family. <laughs> Not gonna do it. Can't drag me back into it. We also have a few people joining in uh, online. We got the Neverworld who's joining in on the trolling, being a mix between a codaholic and a cocaine addict. And then I don't know who DH is. If you want to say hello real quick, DH, feel free. You know who I ran into at Rustcom? Ed Page. Who used to come? Remember he moved to Texas? I don't remember. But if I saw him, I probably remember. You totally you recognize him. Okay. He's the, he did a bunch of command line stuff. Mm-hmm. And now he's, he's now he's working for Feature and he's generic. working on cargo all the time. You're gonna arrest me now. Okay. Well, I mean, he was I, mean, I recognize him, but that's all. I'm sure. The work <clears throat> but uh, I have very little working memory, in, or not beard. working memory. No. My brain like is small. A, you have very little random access memory. My brain is small. Anyway. He has a big beard. It's white. And he wears like a red outfit. No, no, Santa. I like Santa. So I'm gonna re-rail this real quick. So we're gonna we're gonna move forward with the presentation again. Little intro because this gets clipped. But welcome everybody out tonight to Utah Rust. Tonight we have with us Jordan, aka JoJo Bite, who's going to be presenting on deploy Rust crates with. Oh, and we'll find out. It's a surprise. Whoa! Get out! Who saw that coming? PowerPoint extraordinaire. Um, and I want to give a... a, a it's my first presentation. I've got to go all out, right? Yes, you do. And I want to give a quick shout out to Vivint. Uh, thanks for hosting us. Thanks, Jared, for providing us with uh, pizza tonight. And for anybody that is either here or online, if you find this entertaining, useful, or helps you get a good night's rest, consider like, sub, follow on the YouTubes or the Twitches. And with that, I will hand it over to Jordan. All right. I go by Jojo Byte. That's my contact info and all that stuff. I've got the slides up, but I think they're broken. So oh, no. I will fix those after after we wrap up here. Um, but they're working for you, right? Yeah. Well, I'm running it locally on my computer. God, I built God. it and uploaded it, and it's broken. Okay. So the upload is broken, but locally it's doing all right. All right. So... Next is the public service announcement. Uh, do not upload to uh, crates.io unless you like are sure you want that published. There's no delete option, um, and it's there forever, basically. You might be able to email someone and get something removed, but it's only, not going to be fast. Only in extreme circumstances. Yes. There has to be like an overriding security reason or safety reason yeah so it's the new blockchain yes basically yeah. <laughs> all right so don't follow so along is that what you're there? that's exactly what you're hearing don't exactly, exactly. Probably probably up there, so yeah. you yes. Yes. great yes Fine. do not yeah yeah don't ship useless crates that's the tldr um if you want to test stuff Wait, what i looked up huh what if it's not working? is it useful I mean, if you get use out of it, you probably shouldn't tell us. Um, so there, there are some self-hostable cargo registries, so you can run them yourself if you want to test some of these commands out without polluting the global namespace. So as, as I noted here, um, I have not tested any of these, so use at your own risk. Oh, there's also the official. The source code for crates.io you can use too. Oh, I did not know that. I it's not that officially one. supported as run yourself. Mm. It's just there. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, so if you want to follow along tonight and try hacking stuff, um, you need Rust installed. Um, and then I'm also going to be focusing on using Cargo Generate. Ooh, what's that? Um, it is a cool little package that allows you to use template 
repositories to generate um, your own repository. So specifically, some of them have workflows set up and it just makes it a lot easier to uh, get going with uh, workflows and automatic de deploying and whatnot. Um, hmm? BT Dubs, the Neverworld asks, what is a crate? A crate is a uh, bundle or package of Rust code deployed online that other people can download and use in their own uh, Rust uh, packages. Yes? Uh, yep. Question, comment? Yeah, is there an internet here? Uh, Vivint, yes. Network. Yeah, that's the open guest network. Mm -hmm. But man, this is just like NPM, except Rust. Yes, more or less. And they, and they, but it's hosted by like what company? Just like... I think it's the Rust Foundation running it, mm -hmm. um, which is a non-profit company. Uh, is it like Google and Microsoft and everyone is into? Yes, I think they so. They do sponsor. Yeah. But they don't control it. Sponsors don't get control. Yeah. All right. So why rust and GitHub Actions? This is where I think this might go wrong and not work for me. So we'll see. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's it's not working. Right. No sound. Let's back up. It's worth the watch. Now uh, let's see here. Is it done? Yes. For America? Have you seen it? It's great. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. It's only the best. SNL. Yeah. I think the real answer is because I wanted to know. Let's see here. I like Find out some code and see if. Uh, my code comma T is not working. Cute. All right. Let's see here. He's not going to fall off the edges. He'll just fall back. All right. Let's see if it works now. The name of the crab. Still no sound. What's the name of the crab? The crab's name is Ferris. 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 <clears throat> As in, he's red. Well. <laughs> Rust, oh, I have no iron, Ferris, uh, red. Let's see if I can select. Ah, here we go. Not far enough. Not many people are smart enough for ages. All right, one last try. If it doesn't work, I'll move on. Man, I have a few more shorts. Uh, but for the love of God, why are those shorts so short? Why are long pants long? Why are bushes bushy? I mean, you know, I mean, I mean if we're going to get that area, we're going to be here all day. You know? <laughs> all right. So, yeah, you can take from that what you want, but this might be a short... Uh, short presentation or I might be wearing short shorts. You you can decide which one that is. You will keep your pants on the entire... I will. I I'm will. Check Guaranteed. The table Guaranteed. <laughs> he is, in fact, wearing pants. So dangerous angle to check <laughs> Now I feel like if if I, like, shift at all, people are going to be like, yeah, he's got, he's got, he's got <laughs> those on. Crabs. All right, so... From the actual GitHub Actions documentation, it says, uh, well, what is GitHub Actions? It's automate, customize, and execute your software development workflows right in your repository with GitHub Actions. You can discover, create, and share actions to perform any job you'd like, including CI, CD, and combine actions in a completely customized workflow. Hey, have you heard of GitHub Actions before? Nate or me? Yes, we use it all the time. So basically continuous integration and deployment It's built into GitHub. It uses YAML configuration files, um, which I'll show here in a second if you're not familiar with that. Um, and it's pretty easy. You can have any repository on GitHub, 
add a dot github slash workflows directory um, and then you start adding yaml files and you can you know if you're following the right syntax actually use github actions any questions okay i'm curious who by raise of hand has like done this has done one before wow okay but i have recently just done one of the last thing mm. they're really easy to do yeah so this is uh, an example um, action. The uh, first line, well, I guess I added a little file uh, comment there, but the first line is basically the event you're listening for. Um, you can, I believe, do push, pull requests. Um, you can filter it by branch. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff that's not coming to mind right now. Uh, dispatch you, one that will add a button so you can manually, manually. Oh, manage. nice. A dispatch one. That's cool. I didn't know that. Um, you name it, and then you've got your jobs list. This one's pretty simple. It's from, I believe, it. Uh, it's from the Actions RS Cargo Crate, which is an unofficial source for um, GitHub Actions, and they have a few different um, repositories in GitHub. Actions RS is the cargo... Or, sorry, the Rust organizations. Really? Place it said unofficial. Unofficial? Uh, really? Look it up. It's that, uh, like, if you go to GitHub slash uh, actions dash RS, I swear it said unofficial. I thought it was, like, owned by the old. I thought it was, I could too. Totally, I could totally be wrong, though. Either. Yeah. Not all the time. Um, so, there are some alternatives if you're interested. I'm not going to show them here. But uh, if you're interested, you can definitely do that. I've actually done a setup where I've used Gitty and Drone, um, and that's what I use for a lot of my own personal stuff. Strider is one that's built in, so Drone is built in Go, uh, Strider is built in Node.js, and Jenkins is in uh, Terrible Java, and uh, you can use it, but uh, I'm not going to. Uh, I, I have my opinions about Java, apparently. Um, or you could use, huh? And they're correct. Thank you, thank you. Uh, or you could use another host option instead of GitHub, and you could use Bitbucket Pipelines or uh, GitLab CI CD. Um, and I believe, I believe they both use YAML, if I recall correctly. So it would be similar setups, but they're going to have different structure to the files. Um, yeah. Questions? Yes. Uh, as an additional, you can also run your own GitHub Actions in your own environment. Like if you have a Kubernetes cluster, you can do a scalable oh, automated thing. Very if you cool. a Docker image, there are many. If you don't have one, I do. Nice. So you can, you can use GitHub Actions anywhere, oh. including your weird enterprise with all the rules. Cool. Do it. So awesome. I, I believe that the embedded Rust working group has... Uh, so the people involved have developed a hardware in the loop testing strategy that is triggered by GitHub Actions. So awesome. What's hardware in the loop mean? Into their, uh, into their own infrastructure, they've got a bunch of embedded hardware. The actions run in their infrastructure talk to their hardware. So it, 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 hardware in the loop just means that the, the unit tests actually talk to their hardware. Code runs on. Oh, cool. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions? Yeah, so, yeah. isn't GitLab like really expensive for CNC? Um, I uh, used to uh, self host GitLab and it would kill my server because Ruby's the devil. It's up there with Java. Wait, um, wait. The one with the fox, right? That's yeah. 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 And so, like, I heard they were like five times in their prices, so we were like, we can't do this. Uh, I believe it. it. It was pretty expensive, so I always self-hosted on a DigitalOcean server, but I kept having to up my DigitalOcean server <laughs> because it would, like, basically the bigger I made it, the longer it would take before uh, it had, like, a memory leak that killed the server, and then my Git and CI, CD was just offline. And it wasn't actually uh, pipelines or anything running. It was, I could not use it for three months and come back and it's offline just because some like heartbeat or something was having a memory leak. 
I hope they fixed it, but... Sounds like you need to reboot like the server every day. Yes, but that's... I guess I could have done that, but I just decided to go with Gitty and, uh, and Drone, and it works great, and I've never had to restart it, and it's been running for over a year now, so... It only uses 10 megs of RAM. Yeah, it's great. Well, well a little more than that. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. All right, so where to start? Um... I was looking around trying to um, find stuff for this presentation, and I stumbled across Cargo Generate. Um, Cargo Generate is basically a templating, uh, templating, templating, tem templating, sure. something like that, something like that. Um, you can create a template and. Uh, you can make your own your own templates and add them to um, your favorites in this package, or you can use uh, other ones on GitHub. And at, I mean, you can use any Git repository. Actually, it doesn't have to be on GitHub, but uh, it does have some helpers and stuff. So it does have like stuff like this where it's got cargo generate. Um, I actually included this one for Nate. Uh, this one does a bevy starter. Um, and uh, oh. like assembles the entire package, even gives you something you can build the cargo. You can cargo build right off the generated package, and it tends to work. It's worked for me. So there's also a, uh, a Nicholas E I has one as well. It works, oh, it works really well. Nice. I haven't looked at this one though, so nice. I don't know the difference. Um, my guess is the difference is probably like just workflow setup and the configuration that goes into it. But yeah, I haven't checked that one out. So does it does it provide uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux builds as assets? Yes, I believe it's probably so. Pretty similar. Back yeah, um, yeah. So there's several options here. I included the Bevy one. This Rust GitHub template one, um, I actually found to be one of the uh, best starter ones. If you want a pure Rust package, it um, it had a lot of the stuff pre-configured. So some of the others that I ran across were lacking in some of the configuration in terms of uh, GitHub Action workflows. But this one seemed to have everything set up. It ran CI and CD, so it would run through, test your stuff, build it, um, create a release, and then if you so desired, you could then trigger the release to deploy, and that would trigger the um, cargo publish, which would update, um, uh, which would update crates.io. So these are our several options. Um, let's see, any questions? All right, moving on. Um, included some of the links here. That's just the links to them. They're all in uh, GitHub. Um, so publishing crates, if you've never published a crate before, you just go to crates.io. Um, you have to, as far as I can tell, you have to log in with a GitHub account. I didn't see any other way. You can't just use an email or anything. So you've got to do a GitHub account. But once you're logged in, you visit um, the settings tokens page and um, you create a new token and you save it. So add it to a password manager, add it to your environment, somewhere you consider safe. Um, and uh, you then use that. If you run cargo login, it then asks for that token. Or if you're going to be using it like uh, we're talking about right now with GitHub Actions, you would need to either add it as cargo registry token or cargo API. I'm saying cargo API. So let me back up. Um, the actual settings tokens page mentions using cargo registry token, but uh, this generated crate, this first one here, um, that one sets it up to look for the cargo API key, which is why I included this. So it's more helpful if you're using that as a starter point. Um, and then in GitHub, you just uh, go to your settings for the repository. You go to secrets and click actions, and um, you can add your secret there. What's up? 
So anybody with that token can just push code to it? Yes. So keep it safe. Don't just like. Yeah, so it's like, as I think about like NPM, there's like 4,000 packages for like one line of like React or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, yep. Any of these keys floating around on somebody's computer, like somebody can hijack it and infect yep. like thousands and millions of computers. This is where I would recommend if you're um, using cargo on your local machine and you're using it in github for each instance i would make a different key uh or at least silo the keys so that you've got a github actions one and if you realize something's been compromised you kill that one if you notice your local host version has been compromised you kill that one just regenerate it um but but i wouldn't just use one key and use it everywhere definitely don't do that use multiple if if you're uh uh devoted enough you can uh use a unique key probably for every single repository um but i would guess most people wouldn't do that they would probably use it for whatever brand or workspace all right any other questions all right so that was my short presentation, but I figured we could work on something now. <coughs> uh, so one of the things I've been wanting to get to, let me see if I can. Uh... <clears throat> Going to switch this around real quick. go all right um <clears throat> all righty so that's not the one I wanted. <clears throat> Actually, maybe I'll pull this up first. So I built um, a Electron app years ago. Um, and I've been meaning to redo it in uh, Tari. Um, and I, Ooh, I've started it a bit, but I haven't actually gotten to it. Um, but I was also going to actually do a command line option this time in Rust. Um, so let's see here. Go. Oh, that's funny. I apparently have a private repository. Maybe I'll just use Gitboard this time. So, this is my Gitboard repository. Beep, boop, bang, boop. That's my company, bang. Beep, Boop, Bang, Bang. Um, I guess I've got some screenshots here, so. <clears throat> That's not a great screenshot. Let's see. Or maybe I pro probably got it installed. No, I don't. I don't have my own app installed. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, this is the app. It essentially makes it easy to um, clone Git repository. So you can copy the Git link or you can copy the repository and just you paste it in the uh, search bar there. You can also use it to search and stuff. Um, but the pillage option, I would, I'm actually planning to rename and just call it Horde. But... Um, if you click that, it just finds all the packages. I think it might only work with GitLab and Git Horde right now, but it will just clone all the repositories under that user. Um, and so you can clone things really fast, um, which I think I may have just shown in that GIF. But anyways, you, you guys are welcome to check it out. But 
I was working on, let's see, where are all my windows? So I want to build a Cly for it. Um, I've already, um, maybe Nate would d disapprove of this, but um, I already claimed the repository that, uh, or the, uh, the crate the that crate I plan name. to use, even though it doesn't really have anything in it. As long as you're going to use it. Yes, I am going to use it. Then we're all good. Yeah, so let's see here. I can... Uh... So VS Codeium is the Microsoft VS Code? Mm-hmm. Oh. The elders of the internet. There's also another one. Um, Mr. Code? What? There's, there's VS Codeium and Mr. Code. Both are D Microsoft, um, but I've tried Mr. Code and I don't think I liked it very much. Um, but it's been a while. So, anyways, interesting. Check it out. All right, let's see. Um, hmm. Anybody's VS Code like one three dollars sometimes? I only ever known it to be that way. Yeah, <clears throat> that's kind of a feature of it. It's right. what? Clumsy? What do you clunky? Mean? Clunky? Oh yeah, it's totally clunky. Fast? No, that's never been true. Yeah. <laughs> it's still pretty simple to me. It's kind of rough to do so. I have probably 15. All right, so... So what, what, are, what, what are you doing right now? What's okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to follow that first example in the... Um, so I'm going to generate a new package in this um, repository I've already made. So I'm going to use this, and I think I want to do... So you've got a you've got a repository called Horde CLI. Mm -hmm. You're giving us the the brief of the Horde project, which is basically clone all the things from a GitHub or GitHub like interface. Mm -hmm. And you now now you're making a CLI that you're going to be able to publish to a crate with GitHub. Correct. So an interesting thing about a crate on crates.io. It contains one or zero libraries. And it contains any number of bytes, including zero. <clears> How <throat> oh, nice. So that's what you can have inside crate. You crate can have .io. nothing or a library and possibly wait somebody. I've tried to push nothing and I could not get it to publish. Say nothing. So oh. it's zero or one libraries or zero or more binaries. You can also have a library and zero or more binaries. Oh, okay. I don't know if that makes sense to me, but okay. So exactly. <clears throat> Wait. So like that's that's. A, I know what you're saying, but I'm example, trying to think right? of how to say it. Ripgraf. Yes. You can cargo install ripgraf. Great stuff. It may be, I haven't looked, maybe it has a library you can use as well. Right. I, I get what you're saying. I'm just trying to think of how to phrase it. It has to have one or the other, correct? If you, if you write in a, probably. I've never it tried it. It has to have at least, it has to have exactly one library or binary. It may have additional binaries. Sure, that works. Yes, yes. I think that's what's going on in my brain, but I was thinking you were saying it could have zero of both, and I'm like, so it's empty, but I've tried to push an empty crate, uh, literally making this. Thing, yeah, okay, okay. I first right. understood it the same way. Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, I just used this cargo generate command, um, uh, and it has it created in an already established folder rather than um, had I not used init, it would have actually made another folder called Horde Cly inside my folder. 
Um, so that's what init does. And other than that, it just use this repository, rust-github slash template. Um, <clears throat> and then you provide it with a project description and whatever username or organization. So I use the same one as my git hoard uh, repository. Um, and then it just went through and made all of these different template settings. So including issue templates, which you can customize, pull request templates, and all of that affects um, your Git repository if people contribute to it. So it kind of gives you those boilerplate files so you can customize them for if other people are going to contribute. Um, it gives you a dependabot setup. So I, I think it just customizes. Uh, let me see here. So it doesn't run like every day or every hour. I think it runs weekly. Yeah. So it sets your interval for dependabot. Um, and then it does several different workflows. And this is what I was actually talking about is, um, so it has CI in here and I figured I could go through this. Let's see, I'm gonna minimize this down. All right, so this is what I was mentioning earlier. You can actually set the on, so the event it responds to, to multiple things. So you've got, if you push to the main branch, it will um, trigger this CI uh, workflow or if a pull request comes in it will trigger the CI workflow um, and then it does several different jobs so it sets up um, a test suite so that it will run uh, your cargo uh, tests so I believe this is the same as um, let's see here nope I believe it's the same as running that cargo test. Um, maybe I should move that down to the other line. Whoops. That's weird. What did I push? Okay. Um, it then has Rust format in there, so it'll go ahead and make your uh, uh, code proper and like according to the Rust standards. Um, it's got Clippy in there, and actually this is one of the things I learned from uh, Nate's uh, videos. He had mentioned Clippy, and I was dying with something I was tinkering with, and then I ran Clippy, and it's like, oh, well, you did these in the wrong order, and you did this, just change this, and like, I was so close, but I never would have figured it out without Clippy, <laughs> and then cl ran Cargo Clippy, and uh, it solved things. So this actually does it for you um, in the uh, integration step. And then it also will run docs for you if you're generating docs. Um, and then it publishes the dry run. And so I believe this makes a, oh, it, it will just show a uh, example of what it would look like published. I, I was thinking there was one that does a GitHub release, but I'm not seeing that right now. Um, then it runs code coverage. So just running that uh, cargo generate command, got that uh, set up. Then it also sets up the CD over here. So um, <clears throat> CD only runs if you push tags. So if you um sim it, version contacts hmm sim version yeah sim, sim version uh sim ver tags so if you've got your repository tagged and i believe there's cargo release automatically tags and publishes things for you but there might be something else that also automates the tag process i will say if you're interested in tari which is built in rust um, the Tari configs do not get properly updated by cargo release. And so I have not figured out a workaround for that yet. Um, but I'm sure someone's done something like that. Um, so in any case, this publish command would actually, it goes through, it builds, uh, sets up several jobs for this matrix. It sets up a Darwin, uh, Linux, Windows, MSVC, uh, another Linux one. 
um, and uh, another Linux one. So I86, Arch64, and uh, x86-64 Linux versions. Um, and it goes through, runs that. Uh, let's see, it checks out the repository. Ah, there's the releasing. So then it will release the assets to GitHub, which, um, let's see here. Oh, I actually know why that didn't work. Let me see. <clears throat> it's because that's a private window. <laughs> Habit. All right, let's see. Oh, wait, I've already got it open here. So, okay, so this is my Ford Cly repository um, on GitHub. And uh, what was I going to look at again? Releasing, that's right. Okay, um, I probably have to push this. I'm gonna go ahead and commit all this. <clears throat> I might regret this, let's see. Try not stage those. Uh, unsafe changes. Oh, there we go. You didn't, it's got the little dot. So. Oh, all I did was add that comment though, so it really shouldn't matter. Boy. Everybody close your ears. Blah, 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 blah. It's only six characters long? Don't worry about it. The NSA <laughs> can crack that by sneezing. <clears throat> Well, don't tell them. <laughs> you just broadcast. <laughs> I was I was trying to do the neighbor by cutting right. the audio so I wouldn't be able to decipher it. The... Well, luckily I don't speak my password, so at least there's that. But you type it, which is just as well. Yeah. Are you seeing my keyboard? No. But... Um. No, you can tell what somebody's typing from the cadence and the sound. It's like a touchtone phone. Each key makes a different sound. Mm. So well, you... and then there's also the same thing with the SSH attack, where the, the keys are Just delete your token after this, and it'll be fine. I just made it coming here, so yeah, I guess I'll... Oh, wait, I didn't push. Lovely. Uh, where'd that go? I'm feeling all self-conscious. As you should be. You're in front of a lot of people that are all waiting on you. Ooh, ha, ha. All right, where's push? Now it's going to ask for the password again, isn't it? You don't have permissions to push? <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I do. It's my repository. It looks like you're writing a letter. That's very odd. Um, it doesn't exist yet, right? So you got to do the push dash U first. Is that what's going on? I, well, it should handle it, technically. I don't know, because I use the command line like a grown adult, not a gooey drop-down menu. Rude. It's only a don't trade, but... All right, let's see. <laughs> if you come, we pick a lot what if you just get pushed from the command line? See what the real error is. Well, I, you're like worrying me about doing this on camera. Gosh. <laughs> oh, just wait, wait, if you get pushed, then you'll lose the air. It's also going to ask for the password. <laughs> I've got passwords on all my keys, so it's going to ask, and stupid Windows doesn't like remember for the session. Or at least I haven't figured out how to do that. Agent. I've got an SSH agent. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I think you just have to add, um, change your underscore SSH config. I think that's what it's called. All right, let's see here.
I'll message you this for later. Oh, wait, what happened? Thank you. Oh, this is probably going to break some stuff. They did default main branch. Let me fix that before I go pushing things. And All right, uh, main. Master. Okay, that, let's switch things back. All right, we should be back there. All right, so this should be pushed now and it's already building the GitHub actions here. <clears throat> so it's running test suites, it's running Clippy, Rust format, published dry run. Ooh, Clippy failed. Interesting. I actually had tested this on a different repository and it worked without any problem. So that's Why did funny. Because that <laughs> I, I was thinking I'd fill some time in uh like walk through it and see if anyone else wanted to walk through it and stuff like that. So honestly, this is probably more valuable as a presentation because troubleshooting GitHub actions is probably where <clears throat> most people spend most of their time on their learning. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Let me check probably just. To... I already know what I did. Didn't add any Rust code. No, can you guess? Uh, source oh, main. You are sharing the wrong screen on Jitsi. Am I really? Oh, okay. No, you're sharing the one that you. You uh, put all your, your passwords in, I'm pretty sure. Well, this screen, uh, I don't hey, let's see. I've only got one screen right now. This is duplicating. Oh, so, oh. All right, Um. right, let's see. So I just renamed everything to master, and that included the function main. Oh. <laughs> For some reason, oh. Rust needs a main function. Mm. So finicky about that. Yes, apparently. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. I'm like wondering if there's going to be anything else that I need to fix before. Uh, Happy AJ, I'm using the command line, making me be, do responsible things and yeah, show some line. dignity with your short shorts. Well, no, command line's about fun. <clears throat> command line's fun. That's how we do it. We do Is command line because it's reproducible. Because one picture costs a thousand words, but a command just costs five words. <laughs> I love it. Hey, that's built in Rust. Starship. starship. Amazing. Yep. yep. I love what it. Starship. What, what Starship? What you don't starship know what Starship? Starship, starship got that. Uh, those emojis are for Starship. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah? Yeah, all of these. And you get, like... Oh, I actually don't have the font, so this should be Ferris. So that should be a little Ferris icon, and... Yeah. Fun. So I, I'm... Yeah, I'm messing the font. If you install Nerd Font, I think, or Viracode or something like that, it um, solves it. Cool. It's pretty cool. Um... Uh, Am I still sharing it on Jitsi? Jitsi, yeah. Jitsi doesn't update when you do that. Mother. The the one place I don't want it showing. That's okay. Jitsi's not recording. Oh, okay. Sweet. It's up by the Bluffdale Data Center. Mm, okay. Thanks, Bluffdale, for backing up all my stuff, but not letting me restore from it. All right, let's see They'll if this... They'll let you restore uh, from it in court. <laughs> What is clipping again? Linter? Linter or matter ish. It gives you hints about improvements you make. It's not just styles, it's also best practices. So they have to find like specific to us. Yeah. Press it in. So you can run really something awesome. like this. I don't know what it'll do right now, but it should, if there's any problems, it should tell you. But I guess this code is decent enough. None of it's mine, so <laughs> there's no problems. Hello world. Yeah. Passed with blank. <laughs> well, if you do something where you said you would like an let, and it'll let you know, like, hey, it's one of the automatic views that lets you. And look at that. So the CI passed. Um, so it ran all those commands in the workflow. And if you go into, so I'm in actions right now. You can see your different workflows, which are coordinate with the YAML files. Um, and I believe you can even edit them in here, if I recall correctly. Maybe I'm recalling incorrectly. Well, you can add them on the... <clears throat> there it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it just takes you in there. So you can see your YAML just like any other file and go into edit mode if you need to. But um, you can also do new workflows, which is pretty awesome. So workflows essentially define a capture group or <clears throat> branch or tag name. Yes. And then a sequence of things you want it to do. Ish. Workflows is like CI though. Yeah. You you could capture by branch, but you could also, if you design your workflow, it, it could be capturing multiple branches, different right. scenarios, all that kind of stuff. A, a workflow is an action. <clears throat> yeah. So if, if I want five different actions, I have five different workflows, and each workflow can have one or more no. branches. No. An but, action, like an action that you share, is a single step. That's what this is looking at um these are the actual action well no these are workflows there are it's called github actions yeah yeah i know i'm what trying to remember the actions oh, are work let me pull workflows up. have jobs jobs have steps stages steps the name, the name of the product is called stages of actions stop trying to read into what that is somebody's name like, anyway <laughs> the step is you can, you can run an action for a step um it's, it's pretty standard in pretty much any uh, CICD suite that you were going to have like these layers of composability. And yeah. a workflow is just like a. But the workflow is the thing. thing. It's the thing. <laughs> it's the complete thing. Is the workflow. No, I no. have more workflows than most of yeah. workflows. Right, but each one of them does a thing. Usually, it does. Usually multiple does, things okay, usually yeah, chained together. A valuable, useful thing. Yeah, like CI. So, so, so or for example, publishing thing. Checking out a repo is not a valuable <laughs> thing unto itself. You have to then build it, <laughs> and then you have to. So what I'm saying is, the workflow is it does the entire valuable thing. It does yes. the release. Dare I say, step. 
Yes. Or an action is but the staff that you pass yeah. things to, and then like you compose those into logics. Higher flows of like if this fails, then run these three steps. But otherwise, just run these two steps. <laughs> like you could do all this weird dependency chaining stuff and get really complicated in a workflow. But in an action, it's supposed to be like this is the the basic building block of GitHub Actions. It's a function you pass stuff to. It does some stuff. It might be itself composed of like twelve actions. Right, and that you will see the interface that you're saying. Okay. Right, but the workflow is yeah. the thing. The, the important thing, the thing that anyone that's going to use this cares about. Sure. Yes. So, yes, a workflow runs multiple actions. Each, each action is essentially a step in your workflow. Um, and you can group them by jobs. So, essentially, you can have similar actions. Um, and, yeah. That's what a workflow is. So this is the uh, cargo action that is um, part of the actions RS, and it does say unofficial like I thought it did right there at the top, unofficial GitHub actions for Rust programming language. If there's official ones, I don't know where they are, but these seem pretty official. A lot of people use them. They're probably They're the most the official. Ones. Yeah, are they? It's not, something like that. Um, <laughs> They, if, if, the, if you go to the web page for it, unofficial but widely used. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the first workflow that I showed. It's just a very simple one from the uh, CS Spencer. Um, it's the first one they show for, for the cargo GitHub action. Um, and then they have a few other examples in there um, for how to use the GitHub uh, or the cargo action in coordination with some of the other things. Like they also have this tool chain one, which lets you set the actual tool, tool chain that's being used for uh, the build. And then, um, oh, they have another one. I forget which, what it is, but so they, they have several different actions available under that repository. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. That ran. I'm wondering if I can tag this. So if you tag it, we get the Hello World on Cargo? <clears throat> I think so. Do it. Um, Dance for me. Do it. I meant to say it with more of that emphasis, but it, I was so excited to drop <laughs> all of the. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah. You can tell who runs this meetup. Everyone. Todd? Someone. I'll run anything. Running's for people that want to be fit. Okay, so oh, that's right. So I believe it's cargo install cargo release. Do you know Nate? Yes, cargo release. I always use cargo release. Okay. But, I mean, the, the basic command is cargo publish. Cargo publish is a release. Will that trigger the tag update? Cargo no. publish. That's what cargo release that's... is for. That's why I was oh. installing it. It'll tag it. It'll run your changes. It'll add an extra commit for you if you want. It'll bump your version number for you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can run Cargo Publish and be like, you've already published this version. Like, oh crap, change the version. Cargo Publish again. You didn't commit. Oh, okay. Commit. Cargo Publish again. Like, uh, okay, it worked. But like, you forgot to tag it. So now you go tag it. Yep. And then you need to go and create a release if you want to do that. Does cargo release update the version in your cargo tunnel, or is it just respect that? Yes, it does. Intent? It does. So you can say a cargo release version 0.7.1. Oh, sure, you can override it, but like usually you just love cargo release patch, cargo release minor. Just like NPM version. And no, then bump it for you. It's, it's the same as NPM version, but. Or, of course, you can have all the command line options. You like, 
Don't change it. Or set it to a specific thing. Yeah, yeah. At that point, you're better off just typing out the big things. <laughs> what I really like it for is I'll have my version number in my readme in an example and in some documentation, like in the code and in some documentation in a markdown fire, file in some random place. And you can add to your config some regular expressions for like, go change this line in this file. And it does that. And also it does the, it has like this default change log management stuff. Wait, what has nice. that? Cargo release. Oh, okay. So if you use yeah, the, yeah. like the little template for what your change file, what your change log file looks like, then whenever you're changing stuff, just add lines to the unreleased section. And then when you do cargo release, it'll fill out the number, it'll make a new unreleased section, it'll make a leak to to, to get have diff and like all this fancy schmancy stuff. That is nice. It's nice. Could it make a plug for a tool called semantic release? Mm -hmm. it's in node. That will do but it will do that by basically calling cargo and doing all that with the cargo plugin. But you can do this with like a we do it with TypeScript and protobufs and like a dozen other things. Um, but it's great for if you're following semantic versioning and you do conventional commits, you can basically automate your bit of actions and do like a full NPM release and publish while also doing a release of the same binary in GitHub releases, bumping your version, doing all of those conventional commit uh, in your change log, that sort of thing. So kind of the same thing, but for like cool. every language and every environment Whoa. that you want to deploy it. Yeah rather than just crates, but it will also allow it to just kind of seamlessly tie into the right tool for by using cargo or whatever instead of that's cool. sticking it in their own non invented here. So a great addition to that. So what I've been releasing without cargo release, the only thing normally it's like three commands to run stuff that are changing cargo toggle, and then you can run cargo publish if that's really all you have to do. But uh, I think the cabinet was if you like, I'm done. Like, change your cargo toggle, then commit it, and then, then publish. You'll see there's an unstaged commit, which is that uh, when you defer a cargo build one more time, so the cargo the cargo log file also updates the latest version. That may be like way too in the weeds, but that's something. Oh, I see stupid thing. And I just realized you have to build one more time, then. After you above your version, build it so it updates the log file. Yep. But it's not a lot of work. No, I, I, I totally love the idea of having something that does those, you know, like you're saying. This, <laughs> what, was the, what was the tool you're talking about called semantic? Release? Semantic release, yeah. Called Have you guys release. tried conventional change log or conventional commit? We do conventional commits because it ties into semantic. Yeah. So there, there is no actual thing conventional commit. There's three different people that have called something conventional commit. How do you know which standard you choose? Conventional commits. I don't mm -hmm. think that's a thing. Or I think it's .org. .org. But that one is not the one that's the most popular, I don't think. It's just the one that got the domain. Okay. So talk to Google. It's the one that Google uses. It's the one that Semantic Release uses. References. Conventional commits that are. Let me see. It's pretty basic. So it's like, if you're doing something that's not this, chances are it's weird. An edge case, not like we only use fix, uh, no release feature for beat. Uh, yeah, this this one control. this one doesn't specify refactor or lint or style or yeah. We would just call that a chore. You can put it in more context or something that's free for you, context for you. Okay, Nate, what uh, command should I include with the release or just cargo release, nothing else? Uh, cargo release should work fine. That'll do a dry run. Okay. 
It won't. It won't actually release you until you get the dash dash X I usually do a cargo release dash VV when I'm doing a dry run. Dry run to see like all the details. <clears throat> oh. Or if you don't want all the details, that's fine. I mean, that was all the details right there now. There you go. It's then, hello world right now. And then you so can do like dash VV like that. And then I think what is it level? I can't remember. There's just an argument. You can do something like minor or something. You want to oh, that's right. I do want minor. No. Not patch, dash, patch, sure. patch. I can't remember if I have to give it. Patch, five, minor, major, right? Part. Yeah, patch is your third one. Yeah, there you go. Zero, right. zero, one, one. From your <clears> zero, <throat> one, zero. So that's all this dry run, and then add dash dash execute to if like you actually want to do it for real. Ah, uh, see, I don't want uh, zero, one, zero though. I want zero, zero. No, you can't do that. Why not? Are you a madman? <laughs> yes, I am. Just, Who did you think you invited to uh, uh, show a presentation? But then, but then how does anybody know what they can depend on? Uh, I think if you just don't put, like, I don't something... Think, I don't think I've released this other than committing the code. I haven't added a tag to this. I haven't released it on... Uh, on crates. So if I do that... And actually, the crates one right now is zero zero zero. So the crate that I already made earlier. What's the MPL one? Is it dash two or something like that? Two point oh. The license. I don't know what. That's... The license is it MPL dash two point oh or I think it's M MPL dash two. It could be wrong about that. Me. Hmm. It actually won't let you publish if I would uh, do MIT and Apache two do all this. Oh, that's what it was showing. The that's a really bad idea, unless you really don't care about your code at all. <laughs> Okay. Here's what they're coming. Hmm? What do you do if you don't care about your code? Because I'm interested. Practice <laughs> user and MIT. Uh, dual license. Can you fix it out? That means you can basically do anything. No, you can. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I don't feel like you're like, so as far as anything. Yeah, I'm, yeah. he's there's on his own for his plan. There's a GoPTF It's do whatever. <laughs> That's not legal. I mean, it's legal. No, no, it, no it's, it's not it. illegal, but it's not binding. It's not recognized. If you do a license check, the WTFPL will not pass a license check. So there's there's license check tools if you need your legal team to. Oh yeah, won't, yeah, won't pass. The the problem with Apache and MIT is that you. So that's what it used to do because MIT is basically a blur and I guess it's good. And then Apache is an actual legal document that's been done by a lawyer. But uh, they give you basically no protection or recourse. So you think, oh, I'm going to release this thing. And because it's open source, everybody's going to play nice and nobody's going to try to use my branding or my likeness or whatever in order to fool someone or scam someone or rip me off. But you actually just gave them the right to do that, so they can. And eventually, if you have a project that becomes successful, then they will. And then you have to deal with that. Whereas if you use MPL, that actually gives you legal protection. It, it keeps it open source, but basically if somebody wants to copy your code, they need to make a... If they, if they want to do something that would rip you off, they kind of have to hard fork and make it apparent that it's a hard fork. So you have you personally get legal protection out of the NPL as well as it being open source. So I would I would say unless you have a certain blanket copyright protections that you have by default whenever you create something. And yes, but it, then it's it, not open source. And then yeah, if you but, publish it on a site, I don't when, you, when you're when you're saying that you know somebody can do whatever they want with it and you can get in trouble for it. That's up to lawyers to decide, and it has to do with 
the copyright that's granted when you create something. And like the the WTF EL, the some of the this the concerns about it, it may not actually disclaim your copyright. Like, yeah, if you, if you want something different, different countries have slightly different copyright laws. A little bit of a, a difference in what it takes to give up your copyright, but to allow people to do things. Yeah, if, if so. you if you want something public domain, uh, Creative Commons Zero is the license to use. That is a legal public domain. That's the legal equivalent of the WTFPL. I, I mean, there's there's lots of fighting and. Uh, that go on over licenses, but the, when it comes down to it, what matters is what uh, a judge will rule in a case, and what precedent press, and that has to do with what precedent has been established. And it's really complicated to figure, and that's why you hire lawyers and use licenses that lawyers review because they know what the precedent <laughs> is that has been established in your jurisdiction that you're going to be doing things in. So question for the presenter. Um, I forgot your name. Is. Jordan. Jordan. I was going to say Jojo Bites. That's weird. You can call me Jojo by Jojo, Jordan. Any of them work. So what you did, correct me if I'm wrong, so you're generating a crate, you're editing it to make it a hello world, or it came like that or something like that, and then you're publishing it. So you're generating based on an existing repository, editing something and publishing a create from it? Is that what's happening here? So um, the repository I have up here exists. Um, and once you've got a repository, I don't, you, you don't even have to have the repository on GitHub or published anywhere. It can be on your local machine. And as long as you're logged in to, um, Crates.io, which is what I just found out, is I'm missing my deploy token on this machine since I usually work off of a desktop. Uh, and so I just went to uh, deploy it, and I'm missing my token. Um, so I have to literally go in and generate a new token. But once I've got the new API token, um, then I can... Uh, well, wait... Yeah. You set the token on the secrets. That's right. Yeah. I don't. I don't want this to publish to crates when I do the release. I only want it to update the tags and stuff. Is that an you option? You don't want it to publish? No, because I want the CD, the workflow, to do it. I just want it to update the tags. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. There's some flag that doesn't actually publish. Okay. Probably me... dash dash no publish. Okay. Let me let me check that out because that's actually what I'm wanting. So. Let me see if I can. Uh... Sorry if I did not answer your question all the way. I got distracted. I think it's mostly clear. I'm not quite certain what action is doing relative to what you just do by hand. He set up action to actually do the public call, call to publishing. Oh, you're pushing, or you're just pushing a repository of Rust code and automatically publishes it, or automatically deploys as a create. So, yeah, what's, so what's I, your trigger for publishing? I guess this generate uh, that I thought it had does not have. Because hmm. you were trying to make it so that when you triggered the action, so it published to create style. Yeah, um, which it has something in there, but it only does that for tag. Okay. So I need to add a so tag. Trigger, so I was going to do. You add a tag and you push the tag. Mm hmm. But I don't know if that will do the. Re uh, I mean, I guess why don't I do that? I'll try that first. Let me see here. Um, so instead of using cargo release, I'm not going to use cargo release. I'm just going to get tag this current version and push that tag and see if it will trigger the workflow. Okay. And so that workflow should. It's already got the key. It should release it to uh, crates.io. And it also on GitHub, right? Yes. So it will That's it'll nice. appear on crates.io and it'll appear under releases tab on GitHub. So 
once I push the tag. Oh, that broke. Interesting. Why is that broken? Publish drive. Maybe I changed the version. No. Hmm. Oh, dirty. Interesting. I don't oh, know cargo lock. Going. That's what he was saying. You got to run the cargo build. Bingo. Oh, I need to run cargo build before I do this. Yeah, because because you need the cargo dot lock to be updated so okay. that it's in sync with the cargo dot toml. Okay. So I guess I've already got that. I haven't pushed it yet though. So, yeah, um, huh? Yeah. Before I tag it. Uh, probably before you tag it. Otherwise, you're going to get the same. Oh, okay. Um, I would commit and then tag and then. Yeah, or just commit and then rewrite the tag. What about tag, commit, re tag, force push? There's nothing you've done small around him. Can we invent some exercise? Maybe we could do like a merge of some kind. Maybe we can rewrite some history. Yeah, we need a rebase. Oh, yeah. Let's do interactive. Interactive during the action. I have not used Git Merge in months. I cannot tell you the last time I used Git Merge. I exclusively use Git Rebase. Every day. But I only use Merge. What's that flat? For yeah, that's for room. What's the difference between doing? It's like half of a pull. So a pull does a fetch and then a fast forward. But I mean, what's the difference between that and doing get rebase? All right, monitor. Because shouldn't get rebase be fast forward? No. Oh, it's running. I mean, if you're if you're working on, if you you can't push to main if it wasn't a problem. Okay. Well, well I guess you can if your repository is oh, set up. Thing. If you keep rebasing, then people will always be fast forward. Yes. Exactly. So I working? added, yeah, I added the git tag, and now it is working on publishing. I mean. So many things. Oh, two or Hello. Why are you publishing three bundles? And one's ARM64, one's x64, and one's x86. It was just part of that generated repo, so it, wow. it, it had the setups for that. Like, legit, that's why I'm like, it's a good starting point. If you don't want to do all those, you can easily delete them, but at least you... Like, have them ready. Okay. Um, I should know they've all been called just Ubuntu latest. Well, it's, I think it's using the Ubuntu something or other. That's OS name? Yeah. No. I think the, job, the job is templated as the OS name. Where was it? Um, ooh, it already published the cargo. So, if y'all look at cargo, assuming that worked, there should be a Ford dash Cly. As a zero zero one, creates dot io uh -huh. board cli. Um, hey -o! Is it there? It's crazy binary. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh hey, it's even right there. Look, I'm on the just updated. Success. Just the way it's set up in the around. All right. My presentation was kind of a success-ish. For anybody who missed it, the money shot just happened. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I have a download button. It's a Hello World script. It's wildly popular. You are all eight downloads. Hold on, I was going to say, that was a really fast cut get clone or from all of you. I was hoping I'd get some more code implementation, but I, I don't think I will uh, in this presentation. But I think rather than that, uh, how about I wrap up and we just... Uh, will you post the slides in the chat and yes. the, oh. the most important commands? The, the... 
Let's see if this works. What is it? Oh, I'm not showing it. That's that's disappointing. How about this? There you go. So if you want the Utah Rust Discord, you got a QR there. I can also go back. No, I don't. I removed it from there, I guess. So I did an invite just before this, and this is the invite. So if you're not in the Rust Discord, and then uh, this goes to the slides that I have uploaded. It works. So the Horn CLI, is that a pack that's, is that just a template that you, that you copied or do you like put your own stuff in that? I'm going to modify, N now that it's published and it's on Crates IO, I'm going to modify it. And so what I'm going to work on is um, I want to add one of the git commands. So you could do git space hoard space and then a repo. So instead of git clone, you would do git hoard and it would give you the option of cloning all the repositories, maybe do some filtering like a command line, uh, like beautification there. Um, and the actual app right now, it has a pillage option, which I'm going to rename to hoard once I rebuild it in um, Tari. Um, but it does similar things. It just has a UI and primarily it just lets you kind of skip like, oh, now I've got to do a terminal and I've got to pick the folder I want it to go in and all of that stuff. This just lets you drop the link in the app and clone it also. The command line will just have the horde part of it where it clones all a person's or organization's repositories attached to them. And I think right now, um, did it not work? Well, it did, but the URL was wrong in the URL bar. Oh, yes, that's one of the things broken. So when I, I hit refresh, <laughs> then it wasn't there. Yep. Yes, I noticed that. I did mention it was broken. At the start. Oh, I, so I was too busy <laughs> opening it to hear you say it was broken. Um, when I started the presentation, it was broken. That, that's what I had mentioned. Anyways, yeah, so, yeah. Anyways, that's, that's what I got. Hopefully it was informative or whatever. And, uh, hope just you enjoyed it. get those questions. links in the Discord, please. Yes, the, the real link that actually works. What a, the slides link? Yes, the one that works. Okay, if you have such a one, because I'm very, very interested in in getting a hello. I'm going to publish a hello world. Right? We should have a workshop right as he walks back in. <laughs> we have a workshop. Put me in. What's going on? We're all going to publish crates. We should all hello world crates. crates. Yeah, hello world. Say hello world. Oh, fat man. Hello world. Man. None of you are my anymore. No free courses for you. All right. Well, everybody, uh, I'll give them a round of applause. You know, like I just spilled all over myself. But to, you know, to, oh, no. that's good. So, yeah. So uh, we'll take a minute here. Does anybody have any? questions that they would like to ask Jordan about this presentation. How long have you been Jojo by? A while? Years? A couple of years? I've been pushing it harder the past year or so um, as more of a brand. But uh, yes, I I think I've been Jojo Byte on GitHub for at least five years, maybe longer. I forget. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. Did I hear that GitHub Actions cost money dollars? For open source, it's free. Mm. For open source, it's free. If you have an org, you get 3,000 minutes just for existing. I think you get 6,000 if you do like an enterprise or whatever the upper tier plan that you can get is. Uh, if you use your own runner, you pay zero minutes, but you have to specify that runner in all of your workflows. And you can have multiple and mix and match and just pick your, your poison. There's other flavor like Windows and Mac runners that will cost extra minutes. So like every minute you run, it costs like five or something. But it just depends on, on how many things you want to build. Uh, public repos are also free, but not for everything that you can do in, like you can't do a GPU job or something. It's not, it's not the option. So just depends. My private school project says that it gets about 2,000 free minutes, but it's like a private repo that 
I'm just doing this stuff with me, so I try to limit the number of actions I use, like just the tests format, but these kind of be like a little bit. Prudent about the um, mix that I make to it so that I don't like overdo the GitHub action instruments that it generates. It's mostly uh, things right here. <laughs> yes, um, sir. Jordan, what, what got you into Rust originally and what stack are you coming from? And... Um, Rust originally. Um, uh, <laughs> It was back when Rust kind of first came out. I think it was pre 1.0. I got interested in it and I joined the Rust newsletter. Um, but I've, I'm self-taught and I started with uh, PHP. I haven't done PHP in years, um, but I do mostly JavaScript, Node.js, HTML, CSS, that kind of stuff. Um, and I do some kind of, uh, I guess, uh, DevOps type stuff, Docker, and um, set up set up Docker Compose servers. I don't do much Kubernetes though. Um, we can fix you. No, I hate. So so back to what got me into Rust. I was looking for a language that was untouched by any of the major uh, uh, corporate overlords. And for a while, it was just Mozilla, and now it's all the corporate overlords. So I'm still interested in it, but I lost some interest just because I like. I guess I'm probably more interested in Zig uh, right now, unless it's been tainted by corporate overlords. But what do you mean? Yes, like yes, it is. Yes, open source frameworks that are popular managed by corporate overlords. Basically, yeah. Sure. It's not managed by corporate overlords, but Zig is now legit. It's got sponsors yeah. and so, yeah, yeah and everything I mean. either gets corporate overlords or dies. Yeah, pretty much. And what what are the times where you think like I could use Rust for this or Rust would be great for this? Hmm, I don't know. I haven't really used it seriously. I have one thing that I am using, and actually it goes with my drone and uh, Gitty setup that I was mentioning. I created a little server called Hum, and all it does is allow you to do, um, uh, what is it, webhooks. Um, because drone is missing, or at least when I wrote this, it was missing the ability to do a webhook that I needed. So I just built a little, um, what is it? Uh, I can't think of the web server right now. It's not hyper warp, it's warp. Um, so I built a little warp uh, HTTP server and it just handles connecting between drone and uh, creates a webhook so that you can trigger drone releases based on the webhook. Um, so I built that to use with, um, oh, what is it? Ghost. So I have a ghost blog that uh, whenever you publish things on the ghost blog, it triggers this webhook to hum, which triggers a release of drone and publishes my blog uh, to jojo.io. It's just a, is it just a trigger webhook? Just like you hit it and it triggers it if you're not sending anything in there? Pretty much. I, I think there's some authentication to it, but other than that, it's like uh like if you're authorized, go ahead and trigger this build on drone. So that's all it does. It's pretty simple. It, it's actually on. Um, let me see here. So I believe it's in this. Uh, there it is. Um, one star. It's probably me. <laughs> Let's see. Is it one I No, maybe not. You're, you're not signed in. <laughs> it is me. See, told you. He looks just like you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I made that myself. Did you really? Yeah. You're an artist. It's an SVG. You made that in Vector? Yeah, Inkscape. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's my little portrait. Kind of resembles me, I think. 
Um, so yeah, this is the repo if you want to check it out. It's under my same uh, business. So it's a warp and request server. I think this um, this might be a stripped down version. I think I have the one I actually use has some authentication and I think I stripped it out for this GitHub uh, repository. But this is actually what I watched Nate's course on and I was struggling with getting it to work and then found out about Cargo Clippy and ran that and it's like, oh, you did these out of order and just move this over here. And I did that and it's like, oh, it works great, sweet. Like, so uh, yeah, you can check that out. Yeah. And I uh, got Docker information in there if you wanted to run it in a little Docker container or whatever. Yeah, so any other questions? We can debate whether corporate sponsorship is good or bad. Yeah, we don't have a problem with it. Let's do it. We got time. Before, I mean, like, before we do that, one, two, three, go. I feel like we have least to say there's a lot of talking down on free money, free air quotes money. But uh, maybe it's because I haven't I got, gotten any I of this free money. Foundation, so. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. So how Microsoft one and, that, and Google and the Rust Apple Foundation set it up really well so that the sponsors can't can't really I mean, like, exert any direct yeah, influence to that. Mostly okay with influence from corporate sponsorship. It makes my life easier, especially when you're trying to say, you know, what's the technology we want to use to build, you know, this product line or this next version of our system that we're going to invest, you know, millions of dollars of, you know, man hours, whatever. And it's nice to know that you're not the only one in the room and that you're not the biggest contributor to the table. I feel, I feel comfortable when that happens. So, anyway, how, one, how one, 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 uh, one, do you have to disagree or agree? JJ, 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 but I at least <laughs> wanted to say, before we dog on uh, sponsorship, there, there is some good stuff that I, results from. That's not, that's not what, I'm not dogging on the dogging on. No, I mean, or the, you want to wrap up. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to two more things. One, uh, if there's any feedback for Jordan, because I, I want to start asking people if they have feedback on the presentation, so I'm doing that now. So, any, is there any? Is there any... Uh, my feedback is can you make me an avatar? Yes, I could. <laughs> my feedback is reload the page of two stars. Yeah. Whoa, hey! Whoa. Oh, really? Dude, you got that's, a, that's a 2x multiplier on that, too. That's amazing! <laughs> da, 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 da. Two stars! Two stars! Woohoo! And it's 100% improvement you. Yeah. in one night. <laughs> yeah. And if you can uh, show um, me where your slides actually are, do you have your slides published on GitHub? Or no, well, they are on GitHub, but they're in private um, okay. right. because I need to strip some stuff out. But okay. once, once I've got it worked out so that they will also automatically deploy to that page, uh, I'll, I'll uh, get them published. Publicly. Yes, because I really want the slide that has basically the three things that we need to do. Okay. That's sure. I want that slide. Yeah. What if that? Could you not get to it? You well, post no. a screenshot of it in the Discord. No, because no, I, because it, because my computer and phone. Anyway, all right. Yeah, that's um, I could do that. Because if you uh, want, I couldn't copy the link to my computer, yeah. and I can't open a QR code on my phone. All right, which one? Anyway, is it? Uh, and then last thing is, who's going to present in October? What's our October topic? Lane, I think you were presenting in October, if I remember correctly. Is that is that right? Unless the presentation is in go and we're taking a hard left turn, I don't think I'm qualified. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I can do it. Okay. Rock. <laughs> what, what are we learning? We're either learning a game with Rusty Engine or a game with Bevy. You pick. I think we should do a game with Bevy this time because we've done Rusty Engine three times. I used twice. Maybe. I'd like to oh, I thought Bevy once. That's where I heard about it from, or maybe it's. I used Bevy to make Rusty Engine. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm I'm definitely interested in more Rusty Engine. I, Anybody else? I, but I, I'm interested in Bevy too. I want to see where you got the inspiration. Rusty Engine is a thought? simple game engine that I made using Bevy AJ. for my one? courses. So it basically throws away mm -hmm. all of the game engine concepts 
and just present I want to spend the, 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 like, the three commands that right. you have to run okay. Only to get the whole thing working. My rest list. So I think it's Bevy. Bevy is a real game engine. Just give me a new slide that's got the three, oh, the three oh. commands. It's like yeah, a git clone. CD, so, get well, cargo, and then so essentially cargo. install this, and then these. So cargo generate, and that generates is based it, on it, one of the templates. Give me, give me the give me the thing that'll give me to a hello world that it'll actually publish. The, 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 give me the summary of what I see there. That's why and that. It's. It's only two, yeah, so two sides. It's not, not this, unreal. Yeah, that's not, but there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff I did that's not there. You go to Unreal. Yeah, what? You had to create a tall story and you had to tag and then run. Oh, that's right. Cargo release, cargo build. Give me that. Give me those six. Well, I actually didn't know that stuff because I hadn't done it. I know that's why I'm saying give me that stuff. Okay. So I'll add that stuff. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Unreal was 1998. Yeah, Unreal, and then Unreal turned back to the you know. Yeah, Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually on the same side as Adrian. This one. That's fine. That's pretty rare. What? By all means. Wait. Yeah, there are more people to be wrong. <laughs> what? Uh, Wait, we're I not usually yeah. on the same side. I'm normally on your side. What are you talking about? You're like elixir this or uh, elixir. Being on the same side didn't last very long. What? <laughs> I'm so confused. Are you on the Discord? Or no? Whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm always talking about how great your stuff is, and oh, no, you're telling I'm, me to go. Like, that's me. I'm talking about how great his stuff is. Anyway, have, we have Discord. We have to prove it. True. True. I mean, not ever in the like some piece of part of the hot dogs. I love that this turned around. <laughs> Deal with it? It's best I've come through in 2004, but I have to stick together. That's right. <laughs> so, okay. He's got, he's got smash. But uh, other, other, other ideas for future meetups. Remember, you can we'll run someone over. And I would like to do one with Tori. Okay, Tori Quinn. Yes. I was hoping to include that. Oh, it, as another, like, here's a workflow for Tari. So, so, we've got September, we've got October, we've got November. When are you, when are you going to Tari? Come on, internet. Well, he said October. Boom. Um, Menta. I was so close. I don't want to do September. Uh, November, I guess. Oh my gosh. I think I was going to present on Bun and Dino at, uh, it's, the it's a great JS one? Like yeah. yeah. Is that right? I think that's the in original, October. Uh, so yeah, let's Rocket plan for November. Is what the mod for Unreal tournaments like Doom comes out. Oh, yeah. First person yeah. shooter. Like, how do you remember any of the mods? Oh. Play any of the mods? With people Wait, you could do, no, you could do October. Uh, so, me. Might not be in the Yeah, Unreal Tournament 2004 had a whole bunch of mods. I'll do that for you. I'll the mods. All was first yeah. done in Unreal Engine 4. And well, kind of, well, Rocket League is like a full game that is basically world. just that one. Todd, quit being so supportive so I can talk to Nate. Huh? But, <laughs> we've already got you queued up for September. Rusty Engine, oh. Frizo, and September. So we'll let him go in October. You want to switch it to Bevy for September? I, tomato, potato. That's it. I, Quick poll of the room. I think this is no, no, no. Bevy or Rusty Engine for September? Which uh, Okay, if you're, if you can vote twice. If you're interested, if you're interested in the 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 kindergartner version of Bevy, meaning that it's quick and easy, you can actually do a game during the presentation. That's that's Rusty Engine. If you're interested in Rusty Engine. Big hand up. I'm interested in Rusty. Okay, if you're more interested, or I guess 
not necessarily done your baby. Bevy. Bevy. Okay. More hands up. Whoa. So the Bevy crowd up. is voted. Okay. So we're gonna do a rusty engine in maybe November, and we'll do a bevy in September. Sure thing. Would the crowd have voted differently if they knew both presentations? Because it would you know, be better if we do rusty engine first and then do full bevy in November. Well, we have done rusty engine. Yeah, you can yeah, watch the rusty so engine. You can watch it's on it's on YouTube and it's excellent. Go go it take my excellent. intermediate course too, and it'll go over rusty engine. Yep. Okay. Uh, other other things people want to learn. I mean, I don't know if I want to learn this but Jojo has a really interesting rap poll about uh, WRT. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with, with Rust? I mean, would you talk about that? Oh, yeah. Here? Yeah. It's a I, rust, a I've been rebel? working on a Raspberry Pi WireGuard um, whole home VPN. The funnel, you can stick your router into the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi goes to your internet. And it funnels all of your network traffic through the Raspberry Pi over a VPN connection. And it lets you use um, NF tables or IP tables to like bypass the VPN for certain things if you need to. So if, for instance, you um, are trying to connect to like a streaming service, so many of them block VPNs unless you get the right VPN you can't get through to them so if you're like i don't care that much about disney plus you can bypass disney plus and it will hit hit everything but or it'll hit your normal internet but everything else will be filtered through the vpn that's neat it's it's not really rust at all well <laughs> we'll learn how to do it rust <laughs> well there's a plug huh I mean, well, there's, there's, <laughs> there. I mean, that would be a great presentation for Plug. They're, yeah. they're always looking for presenters. What's Plug? Provo Linux, Provo, Provo Linux user group. Yeah. The, the problem is that if you search for Linux on Meetup, it doesn't show up because, like Forge, they're under an umbrella organization. They used to be. Mm -hmm. They're not anymore. They're not under an umbrella organization. Then they're, then they're just not on Meetup right now. I guess. I guess it's on the mailing list. Hit me up. We could everybody, 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 join the Discord. Bring up the QR for the Discord, please. Everybody, join the Discord. Just I'll drop a link. Everything. I'll drop a link to the uh, Linux group. And we'll get Jordan over that. Unless we want to hand over the Rust meetup for you, that, which we can. They'll meet up at the UVU Business Center down there. I think so. That's the last time I was. Hmm? Yeah, University Parkway. Yeah. Last time I went there, that's where it was. So far. Wait, how many user groups do you go to? So I've been in Utah a long there. time. I've been in Utah since they were called user groups. I've been going to user groups since they were oh, called Utah user groups. groups. So it, it used to be called user groups, and then Meetup came along, and then I guess Yoga was really popular, and then the Linux people and the open source people thought, oh yeah, Yoga's really cool, let's switch to calling our things Meetup. How old do you think we have? Given how shit the website is, how old do you think? I met my wife, I met about 10 years ago. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. I migrated to like this really early, like, so Well, as Walker, it became popular around. Yeah, I know. Five or six or ten years, years ago, I don't know. And they're they're probably probably that, 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 and they've been at it for yeah. twenty years, and their their site, which is not complicated, is still that bad. It's true. It's probably running on PHP and has a single database, <laughs> single writing database. Not on my GitHub. It is Rails. So you're right. Yeah. GitHub's written in Rails. It's still one minus two. It can use way more memory in a single instance. <laughs> <laughs> so, just start leaking it for funsies. I can do the meetup eventually when uh, they're right when we're piloting using Rust and Tree Setter. Remember that first came out? Oh, yeah. I want to do like a switcher in Rust and Tree Setter. I don't know when I'm going to finish that, though. 
This so is the so we are not like separated, but I'm going to put you down for January. <laughs> I'm going to put you down for January. That's many months away, so we can. Like, all you need like, to see my presentation right now? I basically didn't finish it and just like. <laughs> and then, wait, what, what, what is the name of this? The working title of this presentation is Compiler? Compiler using Rust Tracer. What's your. So I don't know what that is. Are you taking tree sitter like I'm babysitting a tree? Um, it, it, was, it was like Adam. Adam. So, so it's used the one syntax highlighting. They're using it for language parsing in general. VS Code uses it now. It's called that because it literally does babysit the tree. Yeah, and anything with source code changes, it can quickly update the tree with yeah, normal it, updates. It, yeah, 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 it's it's very it, it makes a parsed tree out of your source code and then. It updates the parse tree as it goes. Is this a toy language or is it something? No, it's um, um, so a library. No, no, no. no. I don't want to do it. It's already your entire thing. It's not using language. It's just a little tag on the stuff on the stage. Like, you know, it's just a tag on the stage. Like, you know, it's a tag on the stage. 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 Okay, uh, so do you still? It's not. Yes. When I was doing the two protection, Nate, I made an executive decision. You're doing Rusty Engine in September as you were previously, and then Bevy in October. Wait, no? Okay. No, no, no. I wanted to do it. Wait, you just said I'm doing it. No, you just said you didn't want to do October. Yeah, I don't. I want to do November. Yeah, so I just I just fixed that. Oh, okay. okay, now I should. Lane, when are you going to do a presentation? That, that would be that would actually be a really good December presentation. Yes. Or it could be a good January or February presentation. I'll have to refix it because I was using the night or so. That was dangerous, but I'm sure I can get it working by December. It's like rain floating. But the there's a Go project? Let's see, what, what week are we though? We are, hmm, actually, we may not have one in December. I was pretty mad at that. So, are we in the third or the fourth weekend? We are, I think we're the first. I think this is the fourth. This is the fourth. We switched to fourth. Okay. We switched to fourth because I have another meetup that I have to go to now. So that will be the fourth or second. I recommend to skip today. Yeah. No. Uh, why don't we just lightning talk? I have an ad hoc different week. Yeah. Yeah. The fourth on uh, November is Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Fourth Thursday. Yeah. I bet July fourth is the fourth. Yeah. Oh wait, no, November. Yeah. Matt works. Yeah. So wrap it up. Uh, you picking us up? Out? Uh, well, thanks for having me. So, thanks for Thank you.